a one square. Here's a two square. Three square. Can we see a three square is nine? And that nine really is a square number. And that the symbol nine has nothing to do with this. What we have is that represents this. So nine really is a square number. It doesn't it's not the symbol, it's not the square. I remember I remember thinking personally. Well, how did 9 get to be square when it's all round and bulbous like that? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with the symbol. It's what the symbol represents. And what it represents is this shape. So square root 9, very easy to see. What does the symbol mean? Well, let's talk about the symbol for a second. This symbol means form it into a square and then count one side. This tells me I only want to know about one side. If I know about one side in the square, I know about all the sides. So square root 9. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Oopsie. It's three, because that's one side. Let's get bigger. Here's a hundred. Can we see that that's a hundred? That's ten by ten. The big red one is a hundred. So square root of a hundred is ten. Now, let's fool around with a few other square numbers. And little kids can build these, it's not a big deal. And they'll start figuring out, well, how do you make a square out of fours? How many of them do you need? And they can check it and see that it really is four by four. So square root 16, four. We're just counting one side. All right, so now we can see very quickly with the blocks that one, four, nine, sixteen, hundred, twenty-five, they all have something in common. You see that on SAT and you see these numbers and you think, hmm, they're all odd. Well, no, they're not. They're all even. No, they're not. Well, they're all square. Ah. Yes, they all are square numbers. They are all square numbers, even though they don't look square. They all have something in common. Now, let's move on to this shape, the square. That's just supposed to be a square. It's almost a square. If this square is 1, well, that's easy. But, you know what? Let's move this down. This side is one, this side is one, the whole thing's one. The ancients were mystified by that. One times one, one. Ugh. Now, if this is four, then this would be two and two. And we have four. Very simple. Hmm. Stay with me, there's a reason for this. Now, if I have three by three, these are all very easy to see. Okay, so what if, though, I say I make a square and it's not something that's easy to turn into? Like, that's easy, we know it's a square. Hmm, not so easy, that's a two. I'd have to crunch this up, use your imagination. Now, if this is two, what's one side? If I crunch it up and make it into a square, what's one side got to be? Okay, now this is very important for teachers to get directed discovery and get the child to give you the answer. Don't just tell them, don't just show them. Get them to tell you. If this is one and one, well then that whole thing's one. But I'm telling you, the whole thing's two, so what's the side of it going to be? And they'll say all kinds of things. They'll say, oh, this is one and two. Well, if it's two and two, then this whole thing's four. But what I'm saying is this whole square is two. What's one side? Well, one side has to be, hmm, and you can direct them to take a look at something like this. Well, if the whole thing was nine, 
And couldn't I say that this is square root 9 and square root 9? And square root 9 times square root 9. And we know that square root 9 is the same thing as 3. And 3 times 3 is 9 because square root 9 is exactly the same thing as 3. So given that much information, some of your sharper students will immediately go, ah, this must be square root of 2. But don't tell them that. Let them discover that. And if you have to do five more examples where you show 16 and show that square root 16 is 4 or 25 or 100, do it until they tell you, oh, it has to be square root of 2. Now we can start seeing, ah, what are we counting? If this is square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, then now we can start using this. And we can see, okay, if each one of these is 2, now this is 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, and it's a square. It's supposed to be a square. And I can see now that each one of these is a square root of 2, and a square root of 2, and that's a square root of 2, and a square root of 2. And all i got to do is count, because that's all mathematics is. Mathematics is a study of numbers, and all we do with numbers is count. Square root 8 is actually just two square roots of two. What are we counting? We're counting square roots of two. I want to know one side of that. Two square roots of two. I know you learned a different way in school or in college, but let's try a different thing real quick now that we can start running along here. How about if I give you this and I say, ah, Notice the shape is square still. It's still this. And again, each one of these is two. Well, now this is two, 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 two. That's 18. So if I want to know what square root of 18 is, express it right well, I'm not going to do the whole this and that and follow the rules about two times nine or whatever the hell they teach you. Look, all I'm going to do is count one square root of two, two square roots of two. 3 square roots of 2. Simple. It's always going to be that shape. Because, oddly enough, when we talk about square numbers, we're talking about squares. And we'll do one more and quit. And then you should be on your way. Always using the shape. What if each one of these is 3? Well, I got 3, 6, 9, 12. Ah, square root 12. Hmm. Well, what's one of these sides again? Well, if it's a square and the whole thing is 3, what does that side have to be? Well, this side has to be the square root of 3. And that side has to be the square root of 3. Because the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, you can barely see it, is... Three. All right, so getting back to my problem, hmm. All I got to discount square root twelve. Super easy. One, two, two square roots of three. Crewtownremonshouseofmath.com.